Hi guys and welcome to today's video which is about how to keep a terrarium cool in hot weather. Now this is a little out of season for us in the northern hemisphere as our summer is coming to an end but lately in England it's been so hot. <laughs> Well, it's ranging from about 30 to 32 degrees Celsius. There's like no breeze at all and ugh, I feel like I'm melting. And I know I have a lot of viewers from the southern states of America, even South America, Middle East, Africa, Australia. Wow, we have leopard gecko owners all over the planet. But I know you guys have really hot weather and 30 to 32 degrees sounds like your winter. But my goodness, I am not used to this. The leopard geckos in the room are doing really fine. There's a heat gradient throughout their tank, so obviously the heat mat stays at about 30 to 32 degrees. Midway point is slightly cooler, and then on the cold side, it's just room temperature, which at the moment is about 28 degrees. So most of my geckos are just sleeping out in the open. Anyway, back to the terrariums. So there are a few different techniques that you could try to keep the tank cool. Now the first one is one of those that you have to plan ahead with. So if you're planning on getting a reptile that doesn't do well in high temperatures, try to avoid putting their tank in a room that gets really, really hot. Now I know how this feels when you just can't do that because I live in a house that got insulated for the winter because we get really cold winters. So in the summer, it's just boiling in here. We don't have a fan, we don't have air con, nothing like that. And to top it off, I have to keep all the reptiles in my room, which is the hottest room of the house. So I feel the pain, I get what you, where you're coming from when you can't do this, but if you can, then it will make your life so much easier. And as I said, I don't have air con here, but if you are lucky enough to have air con, use that to help bring down the room temperature. Another way is to take an ice pack, place it on top of the wire mesh lid and make sure the pack isn't too heavy so it doesn't damage the roof. Now in this experiment I am using a block from a cool pack, I think some people call it a cooler, one of those things you take like in a picnic thing, yeah. Well, you can put that on top of the tank apparently and it will provide some cooler air. Now unlike ice cubes and that, it won't melt and create the loads and loads of liquid dripping in the tank although there will be some there'll be a little bit but that shouldn't really negatively affect your gecko just make sure to avoid getting this near a light or wires most wire mesh lids have two sections to them so if you have a light on one section then put the cooler pack on the other section if you don't have an ice pack, you can also try filling up a bottle of water, leaving that in the freezer overnight and placing that on top. Okay, side note, since I've already recorded the audio, I just want to add in this comment that this actually kind of works. I use a thermometer to see the temperature of the actual light and that. The actual light was 41 degrees, that was zero. Obviously, since it's an LED, it doesn't change the temperature here, it's just a unit that's hot. But this, this is actually pretty cool. This actually works really well. And with this, I actually had another idea. I don't know if this works or if people actually do this or anything. It was just an idea I came up with which may help. Is try getting a bottle of water, putting it in the fridge, so it's cooler than the current room temperature but not freezing. And you can place it vertically in the tank for more arboreal species or horizontally for more land dwelling species. And maybe they might cozy up to it or climb it or just chill on it. Because I find with the leopard geckos, when they are too hot, sometimes you'll even find them under water dishes. Like they dig themselves under a water dish. Or like I found Ziggy the other day, she just gets between her, I think it's a ceramic hide. It's sort of like that material maybe resin I'm not sure and her ceramic water dish and near a vent as well and this must be just one of the cooler areas of her tank and she will just sleep in there to just cool down and another option you can try which may be quite beneficial to diurnal species so day geckos animals that are awake in the daytime basically is to put ice cubes on top of the wire mesh once again avoid the area where you put the lights and the wires and all of that just pop some on top now, I must say, 
This one is a little controversial because some people will tell you absolutely do not do this and others will say I've done this for years and it's totally fine. So, you know, maybe do a little extra research for your specific species before you do this. I actually tried this in Lyra's tank and the water actually dripped in rather quickly, like the ice just melted really quickly. I didn't notice too much of a temperature difference, it didn't last too long, but the water that dripped in was more like just slightly cooler than room temperature. It wasn't freezing or anything, so I don't know if it would negatively impact an animal because it's not gonna like drastically change their temperature, but I thought it was quite refreshing. As I said though, this one is heavily debated on, so I would say do a little bit more research before trying this. You could also try a Repti Breeze cage or just a screen cage. I know a lot of people use these for chameleons. This will allow, obviously, a breeze through the tank, a lot of cool, fresh air. However, keeping humidity high may be a bit of a problem. So yeah, you can try those ideas. There's quite a few to choose from and hopefully they work well for you. Now, before I go, I'd like to share some interesting stats that I found about New Caledonia because obviously in this video, I'm looking at crested geckos, but I am providing information for a range of animals. But I know a lot of reptiles from New Caledonia are commonly kept as pets. And usually they're said you can keep them in room temperature, which is fine on your average day. But when it gets really hot or really cold, you're a little bit worried. So, here's some interesting facts. I was looking at the average temperature in New Caledonia. Unsurprisingly, the summertime is January, February, March and December, which, you know, obviously because New Caledonia is in the Southern Hemisphere, and so when we have winter up here in the Northern Hemisphere, they have summer, similar to what happens, you know, in Australia. Also, some more interesting facts. The rainy season is from January to June, March being the wettest month and September being the driest. On average, the warmest month is February and the coolest is July. And if we compare the average temperatures in New Caledonia to ones from where I'm from, you can actually see there's quite a drastic difference. Firstly, the weather varies, well, the temperature varies a lot where I live. It goes from really cold to really hot. I would say from what I've experienced, these are a little bit out. Like in the winter times, we can get down to zero and in the summer we get up to 30, but I guess they're doing it on average. I just thought they're a little bit, mm, need a little bit of tweaking. But yes, you can see New Caledonia, it seems to be very subtle changes, whereas where I live, it's much bigger of a change. And also I was looking at the sunlight hours because I leave my jungle dawn on for eight hours a day. And someone said to me, that's a really short amount of time because it goes off at like 6 p.m. But when you look at the sunlight hours in New Caledonia, eight hours is actually above average. They really don't get a lot, which really, really surprised me. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Hopefully it has helped out. And maybe if you are planning on getting a reptile or amphibian, which doesn't do too well in hot temperatures, now you can plan ahead. So thank you very much for watching guys and goodbye.